Mother John, your face, your face is more than language knows. I cannot explain your face. A handful of family photographs from the last 20 years in America, and your face is the only challenge. Who but the mother has a face more than language? Mother John, how do these pictures stay intact? How do you contain everything that you carry? How do you remain on these thin gelatin sheets with the feet of a dancer stuck on a page? Did your mother sense in the dark of her belly how hard you'd live? Could she predict all your losses? Did she guess the pressure of her last embrace before we boarded the bus for Pakistan? Or the redness of your brother's red eyes? Or the last flashes of your country through a dirty window? Did she expect the 300 days between the night of my father's escape and the morning of our departure? Or the number of weeks the black beetle parked outside our house? Or the number of knocks on our door each night before Shabnam answered that Padad was away on business? Did she see the last flashes of your country through a dirty window? Mother John, did she see how wide my father would open the windows and condemn the Kalishnikovs on the street? Did she see the black ringlets of his name on the list of who would be snatched to hell? Did she see your nephew snatched? Did she see the last flashes of your country through a dirty window? Did she guess the price you'd sell our house for at the last minute, or everything you'd leave inside it? Did she see your students ask you where you were going, or when you would be back, or the last flashes of your country through a dirty window? Mother John, the last flashes of your country. Two, on the bus sucking sugar cane. You give us sugar cane stalks to keep busy with, to keep our mouths shut with. If we speak, the soldiers who stop the bus will know we aren't border people. So you silence us with these sweet, sticky plants and keep us dirty. Two weeks, no baths, and wrapped in three layers. It's how we can pass. Border people have nothing, so we carry nothing. The hurt in Jawad's hands from the absence of his slingshot. He wonders if there'll be blackbirds where we're going. Shabnam tries to keep her feet still. There is a little itch, a tiny tickle in them, where the pedals of her tricycle fit. How long would it take to reach Pakistan on a tricycle? I think of my little bag, my khatagak, the pillowcase that I keep all my treasures in, apple seeds and lost buttons and little webs of lint. Your mother says she will keep it safe for when we come back from the trip with new treasures. But you, you have so many more things than we do, so your missing is so much bigger. It takes up all the room on our seat. It splits the vinyl, fogs the windows, and spreads to either end of the bus. It's already hard to be comfortable with the rocks under the tires and the dust in our eyes and our lips sealed tight around the cane, but now your missing is coming off your face like steam and none of us can breathe. Three. Mother John, your face is more than one. It is not a single face. <coughs> Someone once told me that I have so many different faces, and that makes me beautiful, that the measure of beauty is the ability to change expressions completely. After Kabul, you never kept the same face. The three photographs we have from Afghanistan. The first, your portrait as a teenager in black and white profile, your blouse of daisies, your hair in waves, the cool beauty of your face, eyes softly open, halfway dreaming. The second, you newly married sitting on a porch beside my father's grandmother and his great aunt in your pink bell bottoms and a brown and tan sweater that you designed yourself and that my father knitted in his factory. You said he finally got it right after four tries. With your long hair reddened at its ends and lazy smiling eyes. The third, at a party with you in the center, surrounded by your two daughters and your son. Shapnam on your right at five years and in a green gingham dress, 
mouth in a wide open laugh, and hands apart as if she just clapped them. Me at three, standing up on a platform between you and Shabnam, wearing a red gingham dress and a smile made of mischief. In my hands, something small and blue. Jawad on your left at 12 in a red shirt with tan outline, in his right hand a cup and the cup at his lips hiding his mouth. You are at the center in a dark skirt and white t-shirt on which is printed a black and white photograph of my father. In your hands, a plate of cake and a spoon between your fingers. Your hair is tied back, your face glowing a light pink makeup. And your eyes, your eyes are homes to tender things. Behave, or the sleeping Alexander will claim your lungs. Kandahar was once a cube of sugar, refusing to dissolve in the sea. It became a city from sheer stubbornness. Alexander naively said, this is my land, causing the earth to giggle and birth him a wife, Rukhshana, Roxana, if you prefer. This wife refused to dissolve in his sea. We know how the bright sun found him. The next day, snuffed by an ornate embroidered pillow, the pillow, and the three drops of Alexandrian blood have been preserved by the mountains, the big secret of how he ended. Kandahar could never be Alexandria after that delicious murder. Herat is a misspelled heart, a constellation of gold tiles and the ever competitive molten blue domes. Some say Emily would have had a better home here far from Amherst, frolicking with sisters who also glitter their eyes with words. And if you suddenly become poor in Herat, the folk cure for this affliction is to bite the air. In the biting and bleeding of air, you'll find at your feet a small puddle of rubies. Jalalabad, where I was born. Jalalabad is the mythic city of shine, the whim of a Mughal king, Jalal. With a penchant for citrus and fountains, Jalal Abad has a mirror city north, far north, a twin city dragged to the land of 40, Khirk, now Kyrgyzstan. Reflectionless and abandoned, Jalal Abad nurtures fresh springs under her skin. At night, a pari, or fairy, appears for the sake of Jalal and wraps the city in her wing, a city perpetually guarded from frost and percolating with inner wells. Kabul is really Bulbul, a nightingale disguised as a partial rubble city. Her night is a flutter of an eyelash. The women here have almond skin, butter eyes, and pluck their men from a secret tree deep in the navel of the valley. Mountains craft spines for these women, so when they dance, they never bow their heads. Pile it on. Keep it coming now. Left, right, left, right, Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Pass me the spoon. Tradition, living tradition. Where do we go, though, when we get subtle? and humble and quiet and have time to waste on imaginings. Which curling crease up the cotton trouser leg do we run up, slime and wriggle up, shadow and silently, faceless and thoughtfully? Such questions present themselves to you when, once the mirror has responded with a gormless shrug, you are forced to turn away and ask yourself inwards, with palms facing you and nose vision on both sides. You ask, so what am I then? What am I? <laughs> you are a random day off in winter, a bunking off from school. You say bunking in America when you skip school? <laughs> a bunking off from school <laughs> in the afternoon. You're sitting in a midnight highway, lying down with a backwards moon on your upwards cheeks, like a teardrop below your eyes, or a mouthful, fruit that nobody knows about, somewhere underground in a Cypriot treasure cave. 
you're a dead friend, dead, you're a dead, dead friend, hung, who nobody knew, who died in a vacuum where nobody grew, and sadness should be stifling, but really it's just stunted. Sadness should be stifling, but really it's just shooed away for today and the next day too. Wait for the feeling to catch up to you. And when it does, it will satisfy. Black day, good, for it pacify. Make full sense, so no analyze. Stone true life, still paralyzed. But the subtle light haze has holes in it. Sires of white dust dots in window sun lines. Separated possibilities, panicles of perfect dreams, ready to rain true. Dream scoops of half moons like curling ice cream flirting upwards and slowly singing, maybe, you know, no. <laughs> so thanks. Oh, here's a happy one. It's called, Where is the Son of You? I like this one, it makes me happy. Where is the son of you, the giving child who runs in you, who doesn't know or care where to and doesn't try so hard for why? Where is the bird of you, the absolute absurd of you, the squawking joy box turning view that slips in water's affirming hue? Where is the dance in you, the cerulean bluish France in you, the mountain hiking chance in you who does for dreams not what is due? Where are the chains in you, the stuffed up number games in you, the factory folded flames in you that burn up all the bursted love? Where is the dove in you, the only living love in you, the winged spirit solitude that speak to him like the lover do? Thanks.